worship. It is going to be a great morning. Your light shines through. Thank you. 
of Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen from somebody? Whatever you're facing, the cross of Jesus Christ has the hope, has the answer. He has the solution. He's paid the price for sickness, for illness, for family strife, for relational issues. Whatever you're facing, Jesus has made a way through the cross. I want you to lift your hands this morning, and I want you to say, Jesus, I submit everything to you this morning. You alone are my source. You alone are my hope. I submit everything in my life to you today, Jesus. The work truly was finished at your cross. No longer will I allow circumstances or what I see with my sight to dictate my faith, but my faith will be found in you and in you alone. There's a turnaround season coming. There's a suddenly season coming. Come on. God is going to bring healing. God is going to restore marriages. God is bringing teenagers home. God is bringing back the prodigals. Come on, let your faith rise in the presence of God this morning. Jesus, we thank you that you went to the cross. What an incredible act of love for us. And we refocus our gaze on you here today. When circumstances or that lion devil tries to get us to look anywhere else, our culture, our society, we refuse to take the bait. We fix our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. You and you alone are worthy of our praise. And everybody said, come on, isn't God good? Isn't God good? Come on, he is at work, he is moving, and I want you to just sense this morning your, your faith being rebuilt in the presence of God. Isn't it good to gather together and worship Jesus? Come on, there's nothing like this. As you find your seat, just uh, give a quick, I don't know, salute or say hi to somebody there, you know. Good morning, good to see you, glad you're here. Can you believe the summer is almost over? Yay, somebody says. Let's be honest. Parents, you are mostly pumped about September coming around the corner. I was telling our kids, this is the longest March break they will ever have. I hope they've enjoyed it. Hope to never see it happen again. I want to share a couple things with you. <clears throat> Pull up my... Uh Handy notes here. Summer prayer walks. All right, we still do have summer weather. The weather looks great this week. Uh, we've done this a bit differently, as you know. This week, uh, we've, uh, we've set up a couple weeks where we're encouraging you to get together with friends, family. 
uh, your small group, uh, whatever it may be, uh, and do some uh, summer prayer walking. Uh, let's blitz the city with the presence of Jesus. Do you realize that you're a carrier of the anointing? Uh, we've heard great stories from different groups who've met in just neighborhoods all over the place, uh, having an awesome time together praying. Uh, so this to, uh, again, do that again, uh, you know, tag the church in your photos uh, so we can uh, see uh, you out there praying and praying blessing over our city. Pray for God to open people's hearts in our city. Pray for divine opportunities in your lives. Pray for marriages. Pray for families. Pray for health. Pray for jobs and finances. Let's be a blessing to our city. Can I hear an amen from someone? Come on, we should be a blessing everywhere we go. Uh, our T-Track classes are coming up in September. Uh, I am super pumped about this. You, you might recall uh, just a few months ago, a couple months ago, I, I shared how God had been stirring in me just this sense for us to be true to our roots. Living hope, be the best living hope we can be. How many think that's a good idea? And along with, there's many things that go with that, you know, our worship and uh, prayer, uh, evangelism, sharing the good news with people, uh, so on and so forth. But our doctrinal foundations are a part of that. We come from a really amazing uh, doctrinal heritage uh, that really these days you find less and less of. If you do some online searches, you generally don't come across our, our, our exact type of doctrinal uh, stream. Uh, there's a great history in this through Kevin Connor and Pastor Dick Iverson and Frank Damasio and the whole uh, Portland Bible College uh, crew. Uh, so we're teaching basic doctrine this year. We are making this our focus of our T-Track. The whole year is going to be basic doctrine. I want to encourage you to take this course. If you've never taken it, or maybe you took it years ago, uh, this is one worth repeating, uh, because everything you believe, you may not know this, but everything you live and believe comes from a doctrinal position. Often Christians say, I know I believe something, but I'm not sure why. This will help you to start to sort through and understand how it all points back to Scripture. Everything you and I believe about marriage, family, life, society, employment, uh, you know, the kingdom of God, the Great Commission, it all comes from doctrine. So I would encourage you uh, to sign up uh, on that. Uh, we're going to offer these classes live uh, at our Gage Park campus, but they'll also be recorded and be available online uh, as well. If your work schedule or health situation uh, doesn't allow you to uh, make it there, you can uh, head to findhope.tv or just use the church app uh, to sign up for these courses. <clears throat> Uh, you may recall at the beginning of uh, the summer, uh, back in the spring, there were a total of 170 requests for bikes that came to Real Men. Uh, Real Men, our, our men's organization, men's ministry here that blesses our city uh, with free bikes. Kids in need, kids who don't have bikes or aren't able to uh, have their own bikes. And we had a, hundred, a request for 170 uh, come in, which how many would agree? That's a tall order. That's a large, uh, a large amount. Yeah. But let me tell you, as always, God is faithful. We have seen him open doors for us in the community uh, through this year. Uh, we've had uh, provisions show up with finances. Uh, we've had uh, adult bikes being donated now. We've got kids' bikes being donated. We just made a connection with a community leader uh, who just sent over, I want to say 40-ish, right, 40-something, uh, brand spanking new bikes so that they had access to. God is opening doors as we've continued the mission of serving our city. Remember what we shared last week, how uh, the majority of our money uh, for uh, I Heart My City that you guys uh, have been so generous with, a majority of it this year has come in in the last four months since uh, jobs have been uh, cut and things have slowed down. Uh, I think it's a testament to the church that we are not just shrinking back and trying to protect ourselves in this time, but step up and bless our city in an even greater way. Uh, and so I, I just want to uh, encourage you, I want to let you know, all the guys who have spent so many hours down at the, the Gage Park campus, we got a full-time uh, like professional mechanic, a bike mechanic who's helping, uh, who's working there. I mean, God is opening doors because how many know he wants us to be a blessing in our community? One of my heart's desires is that as Christians, if you're still stuck in a once-a-week religious rut, that this season will just absolutely blast that wrong concept to smithereens, and we'll realize we are called to be a blessing and a light in our city. Amen? Amen. I would like to pray this morning, and as you continue to be so faithful, uh, and you continue to be so generous with your giving, which, which you are, you are a generous church. Uh, this year has been a testament to that. 
Uh, we're going to have some updates coming in the weeks ahead with our building fund uh, mortgage payment uh, plan, the Gage Park campus, but you've continued to be generous there. You've continued to be generous in your tithes and offerings. You've continued to be generous to real men uh, in I Heart My City. Uh, and I want us to pray that God's blessing would take what we give and multiply it over and over and over. Amen, church? Jesus, we love you this morning. We're so honored that we get to do this. We're so grateful that we know you and that you've called us and you've saved us. We don't want to ever just take that for granted and sit back home and enjoy it for ourselves. We want to share the good news every chance we get. And as we continue to be faithful in our giving, uh, Lord, I pray that you would continue to be faithful in our giving. Open up divine financial opportunities. I pray that in this, the rest of this year and into 2021, new job promotions would come out of nowhere. New businesses would start up out of nowhere. There would be just such a, a, a surge of open doors that only you could open. As we continue to be faithful to you, we know you will take care of our needs. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Okay, I am... Uh, through this over here. <clears throat> I'm going to just, okay, mind me for one second. If I'm going to slip and fall all over this thing if I don't move it. Let's get rid of that. I don't know whose water bottle this is. Anybody missing a water bottle? Yeah. Nobody's going to admit it, that's for sure. <laughs> Love your water bottle on the stage. How many were encouraged last weekend as my wife shared about uh, the whole journey that we've been on the last number of months? Um, we decided several months ago that whether this went good or went bad, we were going to come here and share with the church. And uh, obviously, we're praying that uh, there was good news, which thank God there was. But even if we had horrible news, we were going to come and say, okay, guys, we need you to stand with us, pray with us, uh, you know, uh, the battle the battle is upon us. Uh, and, and in life, you know, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you end up facing some battles that you wish you didn't have to. Other times God, uh, you know, does a miraculous healing. How, why, when, I'm not too sure, right? I wish we all knew, like, how is it that certain times it goes our way and other times it doesn't? Uh, but I'm going to share with you from my perspective, and even on that front, because Mary and I have uh, been through this before. Those of you who've been around long enough know this, uh, but she had cancer 14 years ago. Uh, and it, uh, you know, we walked through that, uh, that battle together back then, and God was faithful, and God is good, and she is here, and she is healthy, and she's alive, and she's kicking it, and boy, I am thankful for that. Uh, I'm going to share with you six things that God has taught me during this last number of months. You know, <clears throat> when you go through seasons of testing, seasons of um, struggle, seasons of battle, we focus often on the issue. Obviously, my heart's cry and my prayer, I would say pretty well every day for that number of months was, God, please heal her, please heal her, please heal her. And I get that, and we're all, you know, we all would do the same. But I've learned over the years that God works in us through these times. You and I are just, we just want good news at the end of the tunnel. God wants to develop some new character through the tunnel. Can I hear an amen? He wants to work in us, not simply, uh, you know, uh, the, the end results. And so I want to share with you a few things, uh, you know, that, that, that God spoke in me and just kind of even give you, um, yeah, a little bit of a window into what life uh, was like through that unknown. <laughs> Unknowns are awful. Um, but uh, I hope this will encourage you. And I, and I really believe, we said this last week, I believe God wants to increase all of our faith to see a turnaround come in areas that you've needed a turnaround for a long time. To see a suddenly moment appear when you, an area you need a suddenly moment. It might have been 20 years in the making, but when it happens, it's going to feel sudden. How many are ready for a suddenly moment in your life, in your health, in your finances, in your family? The first thing, number one, God is our only source. Say it back to me. God is our only source. Psalm 62, 5 to 8. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, where I will not be shaken. My victory and my honor come from God alone. Are you seeing this trend? God alone, God alone, God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. People trust him at all times. Pour out your heart to him because God is our refuge. You know, our society teaches us to depend on all kinds of other things, but not God. 
Uh, I'm actually going to just share with you. I'm going to try to find a nice blend here in a few weeks where I, I wanted to share with you from my heart on what I see God doing in our society, in our culture, uh, in this time. Some warnings for Christians to be a bit more alert and a bit more uh, aware of the times and seasons. Uh, but also, uh, so, so both from kind of a natural view of what I, what I see happening, but also the spiritual side, which is always, in my mind, the more important side, and the side where the battle really is raging. And surely, you've clued in by now, there's a spiritual battle raging in our world, in our culture. And part of it, you might look at as scary, but man, I got to tell you, I'm excited on another hand, because we need a fresh move of God. Uh, in our in our country and in our culture, our society just you know depend on your career, depend on your skill set, depend on your personality, depend on your loud opinions, depend on your wealth. Uh, our culture tries to teach us to depend on all kinds of things. In this social media culture we live in, so many people hide behind this fake perfection, that, you know, this image of fake perfection that is easy to put out there, uh, easy to put forward. God wants to remind us he alone is our rock. He alone is our foundation. He alone is our refuge. He alone is our salvation. None of this other stuff can save us. Only Jesus Christ saves. Only Jesus Christ is able uh, to be our, our rock and, and provide stability where we won't be shaken. One of the things I love about seasons like this, and I hope, you're, uh, I hope you go through life, you know, I, I don't do this perfectly, but I really sincerely try to go through life always being introspective and letting God point out weaknesses and areas where things get exposed. A season like this is a great time to, to, to let God point things out. God, am I super easily shaken and just smacked around like, uh, you know, just like a rag doll? Or am I built on your foundation? Am I built on your solid rock? Now, I gotta be honest with you, more than my wife, I was quite rattled when we first got the news that this looks like it could be the start to the early signs of breast cancer and we're gonna do these tests and scans and come back in a few months for a mammogram. Uh, I was rattled. I, uh, I had flashbacks and I remember this vividly. Uh, I remember you know, 14 years ago sitting uh, in an up, upstairs bedroom, which wasn't a bedroom yet because there weren't enough kids in the home, so I had it as, a, as an office on Strathcona. I remember it was an evening. You don't like getting calls from a doctor at 8 or 9 at night. Can I hear an amen there? And I remember the phone rings, and I pick it up, and, oh, it's uh, the doctor. We had done these tests on Mary's thyroid to see if she had thyroid cancer back then. And they laughed us kind of out of the room and said, oh, she's fine. This looks good. No, and kind of out of the room and said, oh, nothing to worry about here. She'll be fine. And a few weeks later, I get this call one night. Uh, Mary was out, and it's the doctor herself saying, you know what? She does have cancer. And I remember it was like one of those moments where everything just stops. Like, whoa, hey, I'll say that again? Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, but, but yeah, the results came back. She has cancer. We're going to have to operate, remove some or all of her thyroid, and obviously hope it ha you know, hasn't gone anywhere else. And uh, Anyways, life changes in a single phone call. And so I start having flashbacks to that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, had, I, I feel like I was more rattled than her, which might seem strange because she's the one going through it. Uh, and, uh, you know, especially the first, uh, the first number of weeks, uh, you know, I was saying to her, like, I already feel like I can barely keep up in life and barely manage my job. And then this idiotic year comes along with all the other stuff that's happened. Like, like, God, I, like something's going to have to where we're headed. I cannot walk through this and walk through everything else. My family's going to come first. You're going to have to help me. Get, you know, we have a good team here, thank the good Lord, both on staff and volunteer leaders. They're, they're, it's going to be go time for them because... Uh, like I was just, I was starting to get rattled. I was starting to think of the worst case scenario and where this is going to uh, lead. And, you know, just, uh, you know, I think I even chatted with my family, you know, my parents and uh, my family and was like, guys, get some messages ready because like you might be on deck for a number of weeks if this goes south because I'm just not going to be in any position to get up there and preach. And this is, this is how I was, this is how I was feeling. Anybody ever been in a situation like that? Where you're like, I can't do this, God. I'm going to have to run. I'm going to have to get out of some of the pressure because uh, I'm not going to be able to handle it. And so I was feeling more like this, and she was not. <laughs> she was just, I mean, honest to goodness, the person you saw here every week is exactly how she was at home. Uh, obviously, we'll have our moments and uh, times of praying and crying and just like, God, like, we're really believing for a, a good report here. But it was funny, as I started off that way, 
and I'll get to this in a couple minutes, God ended up gradually, kind of day by day, week by week, bringing me back to a place of firm foundation. Ended up bringing me back to a place of trust in him and him being my solid rock. And I'll share with you later what kind of prayers I was. At the beginning, I was praying prayers like, God, you're gonna have to find somebody else to lead this church because like, you know, get real. I can't handle all this plus this. I'll share with you in a few minutes what kind of prayers I was praying at the end of this. He brought me back to my foundation, brought me back to the solid rock. See, when you encounter something and you have an initial response that might be just rattled and you're like, God, I'm out. I can't do all this. Find someone else. This is too much. I get it. That's a normal human response. What we do after that is what matters. Some of us just sit there and we live there and we stay there and that becomes the defining moment of our life. Other ones of us, we get back with God and he starts to bring that change back in our hearts. He starts to reassure us. He starts to bring us back on sure footing. There's nothing wrong with being rattled. But you don't want to let the enemy win and knock you off course. Can I hear an amen? Okay, so number one, he alone is your source. Number two, people around you are receiving bad news every day, so be kind. This is pretty simple, isn't it? You don't know what people are going through every single day. I remember I shared something, geez, this is, this is back in the spring, so I honestly don't remember the, the context, but I shared something on Instagram, you know, uh, every once in a while I'll kind of blast off my, uh, just blab my mouth on my Instagram story. My attitude is, hey, it's only up here for 24 hours, so even if I say something that's not quite uh, kosher, it's, it's going to be gone, you know. But anyway, I must have said something, and, and uh, somebody didn't like, you know, like one of the words, like literally, this is how nitpicky, one of the words you used sounded a bit harsh in that post. And honestly, in my heart and in my attitude, I felt like saying, will you get lost? Like, I'm dealing with some pressure right now that you don't know about. Why don't you find something better to do than complain about a word you didn't like in my Instagram? This was my mind. I didn't say it because I've learned self-control. Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, as a pastor, there's tons of things you can't say that you wish you could. I said to someone, I said, I post about 3% of what I wish I could post on social media, right? So let's give me some credit here for having unbelievable self-control. Thank you. I appreciate that. Watch, I'm going to go say something absolutely stupid later on on Instagram. And I realized, you know, in that moment, uh, I was a bit annoyed at that and whatever, I was gracious and did, I, I don't remember what happened, but, oh, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. You know, the low road like I usually uh, take. But I remember saying to Mary, I'm like, you know what? This gives you a bit of a window into interactions you have with people at the grocery store, driving, in church, wherever. Often we will get a response or they might seem to be just a tad off or they're a little bit too harsh or they're not quite as kind as they should have been. And if we're living our lives thinking it's all about us, we feel like, well, that person's rude now. They, didn't, they weren't quite as friendly as normal in church. Maybe they're dealing with something huge in their life. Maybe they're trying to navigate some pressure. Maybe the reason they don't look quite as friendly is because they're showing up and being faithful, but they're struggling. I appreciate people who show up and are faithful even while struggling. It's easy to turtle and go hide. Show up and keep being faithful even when you're hurting. But I think there's a lesson here for you and I, and I know God, God, one of the things he did in my heart during this whole last number of months was really ramp up a level of compassion in my heart for other people. He really just started to open my eyes like people are going through things every day and you don't see it on the outward because us humans are awesome at hiding. We're awesome at presenting a good image. People are getting bad diagnosis. People are worried where did their teenage son end up? I have not seen them in days or weeks. People are addicted to things. People's marriages are falling apart. People are wondering where the next paycheck's coming from. There are major issues that people face all the time. You and I as Christians can't go through life being so soft and so, uh, you know, every, so easily offended like our culture that if somebody's having a bad day, we, get all, you know, we make it about us. No, it's not about you. Our life is about loving God and loving people including loving people when they're in kind of a bad, mucky, not fun season. And when you're part of a church family, aren't you grateful that others are there for you when you're also in a season like that? Other people are there to help pick you up uh, and to come walk alongside of you. Uh, but God really just did a, a work in my heart, and I want to encourage you with this. Be someone who learns to be an encourager. Write it down. Be an encourager. Say it to the person next to you. Be an encourager. 
You don't know what others are going through, but you can be assured people are going through stuff. Life happens. When you're going through stuff, here's a good warning for you. Don't isolate. Man, there's nothing worse than when I see a Christian isolate from the body God connected them to that is meant to help them be healthy. It'd be like you getting an infection in your foot or something, and your foot decides to detach and go live in the closet until it's better. It'll never get better. It has to be connected to the body to recover. You need one another in order to go through your battles. One of the strangest things I watch is people disconnect, they isolate from their church family, then they go through a battle and they say, nobody's there for me in my church family. You've disconnected and you're hiding away in a closet. Nobody even knows. Stay connected to the body God connected you in. Man, Mary and I were so blessed by people sending us texts and prayers and uh, you know, encouraging scriptures. We shared with a few people you know, to pray with us during this season. We didn't want to prematurely bring it here and cause unnecessary, uh, unnecessary worry on one hand, and also we're being very mindful of our kids, uh, not wanting to subject them to more uh, you know, issue or drama than they needed. Angelica, we said last week, was the only one who knew. By the way, Angelica, the big 1-7 today. How amazing is that? I feel old. I have a 17-year-old daughter. Like, what is happening here? One of my favorite things, though, we were coming up here today for worship practice because she was on guitar, and she's like, I was so hoping I'd be on the worship schedule on my birthday. I'm so pumped that I get to go worship. Parents, develop a love for the house of God in your kids. Develop a love for the house of God, whatever it takes. I know ultimately they grow up and make their own decisions, but try to do what you can so that this is a priority in their lives. She was the only one who knew. And after we got the good news, we came home from the hospital and we told Frankie and Joey, and Joey was like, okay, great. And he wanted to run off and do something. And Frankie was like, you know, uh, you know, borderline offended. Like, you didn't tell me all these months? I didn't know? And, and we explained why, and she was like, you guys made the right decision. I would have been a wreck the last three months. <laughs> I would have been a mess had, had I known. Uh, but Angelica knew because she walked in on us crying one day, and, and she would get with God. She would get scripture. She would encourage Mary. It was, uh, <laughs> it was amazing to, uh, to see. Uh, but understand, God wants you and I to be encouragers. Philippians 2.4, don't just look out for your own interests, but look out for the interests of others. Philippians 2.4. Number three, Fear is one of the enemy's greatest tactics. Honestly, he loves to grip anybody, Christian, non-Christian, he don't care, fear. Fear is one of the greatest weapons uh, the enemy has going. Fear thrives in the unknowns. Fear thrives in the what-ifs. I told you a little bit last week, I was doing too much planning around the what-ifs in my mind until I realized this is just not good headspace. This, this isn't helping me. This is just fueling that worry about the possible worst case scenario. I gotta stop with the what ifs and I need to focus my heart and my, my attention on God. The what ifs are scary. The unknown is scary. The waiting is horrible. Waiting stinks. Waiting a few months for the next test. I mean, the waits and, the, and, and those seasons of life in the unknowns is where we can truly succumb to fear if we're not careful. Second Timothy, I, I wanna read with you Bill Johnson out in Redding, California, he preached a great message a few weeks ago, a number of weeks ago, I guess now. Again, he was talking about the times and seasons we live in. And he addressed fear uh, at one part during this. And he said, you know, if you're somebody who has, um, you've been constantly ingesting media and all the fear mongering from the media and all the garbage on social media, and you have found yourself crippled by fear this year, that's on you because you should be ingesting and fueling yourself with Scripture and with the Word of God. Don't ingest and feed yourself with literally the apparatuses and with the, the organizations that are meant to, to sow and sell fear and then be all wonder, why am I so fearful? Get into Scripture and let God bring a stability and a peace and a strength into your heart. What we feed ourselves matters. Can I hear an amen? Naturally and spiritually. So, Along those lines, if some of you have been struggling with fear for any life reasons or just even society type issues, I mean, there's a lot of reasons in 2020 to, to give in to fear, but God does not want us to. I want to share with you a whole bunch of scriptures here. Look at this as a little, uh, if you needed it, you know, well, you know when your engine dies and you got to track someone down with the cables, the jumper uh, cables, and you're not sure what one is positive and negative and you don't want to blow the car up and all this kind of stuff. I want to share with you a bunch of scriptures that can maybe just be like a boost 
to your battery, but ultimately you've got to be someone who fuels and feeds yourself in the Word of God. Uh, we're not, you know, nobody in your life is, uh, you know, the parent of a little baby and has to spoon feed you. You've got to learn to feed yourself. Feed yourself scripture, feed yourself truth, and you'll find that the enemy's fear starts to melt away as you focus on the Word of God. 2 Timothy 1.7, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and self-control. Write these references down, and you can go through them later. And if you really need this right now, I would encourage you to definitely write them down and start memorizing some of these week by week. 1 John 4.18, 1 John 4.18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears hasn't yet been perfected in love. God, how, do you, how many knows the source of perfect love? He is perfect love. 1 Peter 5.8. 1 Peter 5.8. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Seeking someone to devour. Ephesians 6.11. Put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. James 4, 7, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Say will. He will flee if you will submit yourself to God and you will learn to resist the enemy, resist those lying thoughts, resist those fearful what ifs, resist all of his schemes. He will flee from you. John 8, 44, uh, your will is to, you are, you are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character because he's a liar and a father of lies. He's laying into some of the, uh, the people at that moment and helping people to see that you're going to do what your father desires. If you've submitted to the worldly ideals and you've submitted to the devil, you're going to cater to that. If you've submitted to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, your desires start to change, then you desire to live out the fruit of the Spirit. You start to live a whole different life. Uh, let me keep going here. Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Say all. all. He will deliver you from all of your fears. He knows we struggle and we deal with fear and we face fear. That's, that's never going to change. The opportunity to give in to fear will always show up. What will we do as a response? 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light in the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And finally, John 14.27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, okay, the world doesn't give peace in case you haven't noticed. The world gives division and hate and strife and battle lines and camps and everybody who's different is horrible. No, God comes and gives peace, peace, not as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled, don't let your hearts be afraid. He knows that you go through battles. He knows that you live through things. He knows that opportunity comes to be afraid, but God gives you peace this morning. Some of you need to receive a fresh outpouring of the peace of God in your lives this morning. Some of you need to receive a fresh outpouring of the peace of God in your homes and in your families. Well, how many could say, I need more peace? I need more of God's peace in my life, in my mind, in my spirit, amen? Number four, God desires a surrendered heart. Oh, yay, don't we love this? Yay, God wants me to surrender again. How much deeper do I have to keep surrendering, God? <clears throat> I told you early on, I'll give you a window into how I was, you know, struggling with this news that Mary got. And I was kind of rattled and I was doing too much natural thinking and planning and like, not again. Come on, God, really? Again? We went through this already. I, was, I thought once is plenty, you know, once was more than enough. God desires a surrendered heart. It's easy to say, I'll surrender if I get good news. <laughs> That's not real surrender. As if my surrender to him is dependent on what happens. It can't be that way. Where I found myself praying at the end, so I, I told you how I was praying at the beginning, three months later as we approached the final weeks, the final days, and I remember very clearly that the week of her test, the night before, the morning of, while she was in the hospital, my heart's cry was, God, whatever news comes, I'm all in for you. Good, bad, ugly, anything in between, I'm all yours. 
my life is all yours. Lord, we're not going to stop running our race. We are here to serve you. You put us on this planet for a short time for a purpose, and no scheme of the enemy is going to derail me from that purpose. We are running after you. Whether we go through this storm or whether great news comes, don't, don't matter. We're all in. Three months. My prayer went from, God, I'm out. Adios. It's been real. Everybody else can preach and do stuff. I, I can't handle this anymore. I'll find someone else. I'm going to just protect my family, and that's it. Three months later, I'm all in, God. Good, bad, whatever happens. I'm not, not, not changing. I'm not bailing. I'm not living my life based on good news or bad news. How many know only God can do a change like that? And he will if you will feed yourself off Scripture and just get into his presence day by day. I re it was actually kind of shocking and eye-opening to me that final number of weeks to hear myself how I was praying. I was like, thank you, Lord. I've, you've, you've done a, a good work once again. I feel like I've had to surrender once again. Early on, I was making all my plans based on what kind of news I got. Now, I'm surrendered to you, whatever comes. Whether it goes good or doesn't go good, I'm, I'm all in for the cause of Christ. When you get into Scripture and into the presence of God, you really can't help but respond that way because look at the example Jesus gave to us. Man, you talk about somebody who truly had legit reason, human thinking, legit reason to say, I'm out. I literally am perfect and sinless and look how I'm being treated. Now I gotta go and give my life and I gotta go die for all these people who hate me and they're actually the ones putting me on the cross. What, what kind of a deal is this? But he persevered and kept his eye on the prize. Some of you need to hear this this morning. God wants you to learn to persevere and keep your eye on the prize. You're going to go through storms, and you're also going to go through amazing seasons of uh, blessing and uh, you know, un unforeseen suddenly moments. How and when they come, I have no idea. But keep your eye on the prize. You are called to be a part of his kingdom during this season. Listen to this in Psalm 139. I, I found David was a good... Uh, you know, person to go back to and read, you know, because so, a lot of the Psalms are so good for seasons of struggle like this. Listen to this one. I'm going to read Psalm 139, 18 verses here. Lord, you've examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything that I do. You know what I'm going to say before I say it. You go before me. You follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. God really kind of camped me on this, you know, when I was struggling early on. Like, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Literally, what are you going to do? How are you ever going to escape the spirit of God? How are you ever going to escape the presence of God? If I go to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest ocean, okay? I've seen people uproot their lives and move literally to the other side of the world thinking that it'll, it'll escape their problems. It does not. The furthest ocean, your problem is the same as it is right here. Even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light to become night, but even in darkness I can't hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was being woven together in the dark of my mother's womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them all. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. How many want this to be said about you? That no matter what goes on, no matter what comes your way, at the end of the day, you and God, you're, you're still right there with him understanding his goodness, understanding his spirit, understanding all that he has done in you, no matter what you're facing right now. God desires a fully surrendered life. Amen? Number five, train. Mary touched on this, so I'll just share it briefly, but we did our notes uh, kind of independently of each other. Number five, train yourself 
before the battle comes. My goodness, this right here is where a lot of Christians in Western culture absolutely miss the mark because we're just, we get used to a once a week religious experience and we think somehow that's good enough. Train yourself before the battle comes. Like an Olympian, and Mary used this example last week. You don't just show up at the Olympics and then decide, ah, I think I'll try that race. I, look, I think I can run like that. No training, no prep, no nothing. They go through years of preparation and training knowing that a big, big, big competition is coming. You and I need to train ourselves in godliness, like the scripture says. Train ourselves according to the word of God because you know God has you here for a purpose and there's gonna be seasons where you slay enemies and there's gonna be seasons where battles are thrust upon you you weren't expecting. You better be ready to fight. You better be ready uh, to uh, do what God has for you. 1 Timothy 4, 7 to 10. Don't waste your time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard, and we continue to struggle for our hope in the living God, who's the Savior of all people, and particularly believers. Guys, we need to work hard. We need to struggle. We need to struggle, to continue the struggle, to train ourselves in the ways of God. There is no easy way to become battle ready. It takes hard work. It takes faithfulness. It takes discipline. It takes doing things that you're called to do even when you don't feel like doing it. Train yourself. Go through the struggle because it's worth it in this life. And really, let's be honest, more importantly, in eternity. You have eternity waiting for you. Don't forego eternity because you don't want to go through some short-term struggle and some short-term pain right now. Can I hear an amen? amen. Finally, number six, <clears throat> stay focused on God's mission for your life. Boy, this helps huge. I'm glad that Mary and I trained ourselves to live this way many, 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 many years ago. As young adults and then heading into marriage and then heading into that whole crazy nutty season where you have little kids uh, not letting you sleep and you got to do everything for them and put on all their socks and their shoes just for them to pick them off and throw them on the ground. How many remember those seasons? How many are in those seasons right now? Right? The, it's like a never ending. It's like you're literally, like your whole life is keeping these, two, these, these humans alive and keeping them fed and uh, trying to teach them how to sleep for crying out loud all back through any season of life we've gone through. When she had cancer 14 years ago, we just have kept on doing our best. Not perfectly, don't get me wrong. Not perfect whatsoever. But we didn't ever just turtle and isolate and say, ah, it's too busy for me to be involved in the mission of God. There's never a reason to not be involved in the mission of God. What you sow in tears, you will reap in joy. I don't know when or how, but you will reap enjoy. We've got to be willing to sow in tears. You know, during this season, I can think of many times where I would have amazing conversations with neighbors. And this whole year, by the way, 2020 has been awesome for just good, amazing chats with people who don't know Jesus. My goodness. Amazing conversations with neighbors. And you know, I, I would leave feeling refreshed and feeling fueled. I remember once I went out on a quick walk. I told Mary, I'm going to go on a quick walk, you know, 10 minutes. I come home two hours later. She's like, where are you? I'm like, I ran into so-and-so. We sat on his porch for two hours and got, just had an amazing chat. I would have amazing conversations with, uh, you know, leaders uh, here in our church, people who are uh, continuing to live for the mission and, and seeing new opportunities in the middle of this season that, uh, that has been thrust upon us. And this, so, so, many, uh, so many times we would have, you know, this summer, we came into this summer saying we want to have more groups of people over than ever because people are craving that after what, what happened in the spring. And we just constantly had just a parade of people over for barbecues or coffees or hang out in the backyard. And we would have these times and these conversations, and I don't know about you, but conversations with like-minded, spiritually mature people, they fuel me. I can be super tired, but by the end of the night, I'm pumped and I'm flying. Or a new believer who's hungry and they want to know about God. They want to know about the Word. And I would finish off somewhere in one of these appointments or one of these meetings, and I would leave and I'd go home and I'd be like, yeah, come on, this is so good. And as I'd be driving by myself, I would get every so often this not in the pit of my stomach. And I would think back to what Mary is facing. And it would like, 
in a sense, almost like try to rob my joy and rob my excitement in those moments. And I just, I would sometimes just cry and be like, God, please heal her. I just, Lord, I don't even know how we'll walk through this if you don't, but we will. You'll help us. You know, you know, it'll be go time for you to really strengthen us, but God, please heal her. And it happened so many times where I'd lay in bed at night after, a, you know, just again, some of these amazing types of meetings and conversations and people getting saved and uh, people making connections and new bike opportunity. I mean, just uh, there's been a ton that you guys as a church family have rolled up your sleeves and ran harder after the purposes of God in this season, not shrunk back. It has been awesome to be a part of this church and to journey through this year with you guys. But I would get alone and I would get isolated and I'd lay in bed and all of a sudden, oh, how many know what that's like? You can have some temporary relief from your burden. You can have some temporary relief for the thing that's worrying you, and you're just like, oh, you feel so good, and then all of a sudden, oh. And it usually happens when you're alone, which is why isolation is a tactic of the enemy. And it would happen quite often during this whole time and during this whole season, but we decided we're just gonna stay focused on the mission God has. Get up the next day and do it again. Get up the next day and do it again. Most of you don't know this, and I got permission from them to share this with you <clears throat> before, you know, before this weekend. Well, Mary and I were journeying through this. Partway along the journey, uh, Will and Rachel, who are in our church, uh, she works with us at our church. They had, uh, she had a, a doctor's appointment, medical appointment. She's had several for a number of months and years, but where it landed with this most recent one this spring was there was a concern that she might have cancer. And she came to share this with us one day, uh, you know, at work, having heard this news. Uh, and Mary and I, like I said, we had told some family and, you know, some of our small group leaders, uh, not a whole lot of people knew what we were going through. But right in that moment, I realized, here's an opportunity. We can link arms with someone and walk through something together. And her scheduled appointment was going to be pretty similar time frame to Mary's. And we shared with them what's been going on in our lives and what, what, what we were also in that same sort of waiting game and that same sort of waiting time. And we would send each other texts of encouragement back and forth. Can I encourage you with something? When you're going through a struggle, there is something literally therapeutic about being able to be an encourager to someone else who's going through the same thing. And again, if you just live your life where it's all about you, you'll miss these moments. It was, it, it just, it would, it built me up to be able to send Will a message or to send both of them a message praying for you. This scripture I came across, I read this quote in a book, I, you know, whatever it would be. And they would send stuff back to us in return. And it, it just became a, uh, you know, we'd have some phone calls together and pray with them. And then the night before their doctor's appointment. And we ended up going through the kind of walking lockstep through this journey. And I want to say a week after Mary got her good news, Rachel got good news. Rachel has no cancer. Rachel's Come on, give God a hand. God is good. God is good. And we got to celebrate together. We got to thank God together. We knew that we had journeyed through this together and kept our eyes on the Lord, kept our eyes on Jesus. And funny as it goes, and this is a story for another day, because while Mary and I were on a couple-week vacation just trying to rest, we ended up buying and selling a house. And Will and Rachel ended up buying a house as well. And we moved, both move on the same day, October 23rd. We're like, God, what are you doing here? You've, like, connected us with these guys uh, to journey through 2020. But let me tell you, it is good to look out for others, not just your own interests, even in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the battle. How many are thankful for the body of Christ? Sometimes we get good news. Sometimes we get bad news. I started off with this. 14 years ago, I got bad news. I thank God that this time we received good news and Will and Rachel received uh, good news. But listen to me. God wants to reconnect with you. God wants to increase your faith once again. God wants to renew your spirit once again. God wants you to pray and believe for a turnaround season, even if something seems impossible to turn around, because nothing is impossible for our God. Nothing is impossible for our God. And he wants to develop character in you as you walk through the storm. But he wants you to stay focused. He wants you to believe for those suddenly moments. I, I feel like I'm a
I'm a pretty patient guy. I'm an even keel guy. I had a horrible temper as a teenager, and God literally set me free from that as I leaned into him uh, as a young adult. My dad warned me enough that I'd end up in the slammer if I didn't knock it off, if, you know, if I didn't learn to control my uh, temper. And so, I, I mean, Mary didn't know me back then, thank the, thank the good Lord. But I'm pretty even keel. I'm just like, what you see is how I live, right? I'm not really all over the place and up and down. But I feel like during this year, I must be developing or had been developing some impatience. Because out of the blue, God has been teaching me patience in the most strange and unique way. You want to hear about this before I finish? I swear, every single time I'm behind the wheel, every time I get in my car, honestly, I swear, there's somebody at Hamilton Traffic Control over on Upper Ottawa, and they know my white van, and every single time this whole year when I'm in the car, there can be nobody around for miles. Every light turns red as soon as I pull up to it. I mean, every, I'm not kidding. I was like saying to Mary, I'm like, look at this. Everywhere we go, it turns red. I have to slam on the brakes. And I'm like the first guy there. It's too far where you can't run it, right? You don't want one of those tickets. But nobody else is in front of me. I like, it, like the other day, I'm out driving. Every single street I went on, every single light I came across, it was like early morning, not a soul around red, 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 red. I'm like, God, are you trying to teach me just to slow it down a little? Are you trying to just remind me to just take a breather? Life gets busy as you grow and you get older and you take more on and your family grows and your life and your ministry and your job. You, you guys know what it's like. Life gets busier. God wants us to learn to slow down and rest in his presence once again. I really believe that's one of the key things he wants to teach you and I in our culture through 2020. Stop with the nonsense, crazy 24-7 rat race and learn to sit at the feet of Jesus. That is where you will be refueled. That is where faith will be rebuilt. That is where heart will change from, Lord, I'm out, I can't do this, to God, I'm all in. Good news or bad, I'm walking with you. It only happens at the feet of Jesus. I'd like you to close your eyes this morning. I wanna pray for you. I truly have felt in my spirit for weeks leading up to this point that God wants to come and do some heart surgery in you. God wants to come and he wants to bring you back to his feet. God wants to help you see that the reason I've not had the faith or the reason I can't even believe for a turnaround season anymore is because I'm living too much by sight instead of just at the feet of Jesus. I didn't, I, I didn't do anything, you know, to change the way I was praying. That was God. What I did do was I continually, daily met in his presence and in his word. And I found I was praying differently after three months compared to how I started. With your eyes closed this morning, I want to ask a few questions. One, if you're here and you know you need to slow down and get in the presence of God. 2020 is ripping by, right? Life will return to normal at some point uh, here in the not too distant future. Are you going to have wasted this entire season where literally the world shut down and gave you ample opportunity to slow it down and meet with Jesus? Are you going to zip through this whole year and even if this drags into 2021, are you going to look back and say, man, I didn't even slow down. I never actually developed quiet time with God. Somehow I kept the rat race going even while everything was closed, which should give you a bit of a window into that this is an internal thing, not just a societal thing. If you're here and you would say, I need to slow it down and I need to get back at the feet of Jesus as a lifestyle, can I see your hand? Because I want to pray for you. Go ahead around the room. Don't lift them halfway up like that. <laughs> lift them up so I can see you. Yeah, okay, good. If you're here this morning, go ahead, you can put your hands down. If you're here this morning, the next group, and you say, there is just a burden in my life. I know I can't bring about the change, only God. It is something that will require the miraculous intervention of God. You get that same knot in your stomach that I talked about when you get alone and that's where your mind drifts and your, and your heart drifts. If you're facing something like that that you carry with day in and day out and you want to just bring it back to the feet of Jesus, you want him to uh, intervene, you want to believe for a suddenly moment, you want to believe for a turnaround moment, if you're facing a similar struggle, can I see your hand? Because I want to pray with you today. Come on, unbelievable. Jesus. Hands all over the room. Okay, go ahead. You can put your hands down. 
if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus or you're watching online and you don't know Jesus and you'd like to start your own relationship with him, and that's what this is, is a relationship. I don't want anybody to move or get up or go anywhere here because we're going to pray this prayer and then I'm going to pray for those two groups we just, uh, we, that you just acknowledged you're part of. If you don't know Jesus and you would like to start your journey with him, I want to pray with you or I'm going to pray with you online and I want to pray that you will know him, you will start a relationship with him and you will get the experience of walking with Jesus. It is the greatest decision in your life <laughs> by a country mile. Knowing Jesus, he walks with you as a friend and as a father, not a religious lawmaker. He's a heavenly father who loves you dearly. If you're here and you would like to pray with me and invite Jesus into your life, can I see your hand this morning? I want to pray a quick prayer with you, and you can start your own journey with Jesus. Anyone here this morning want to pray and say, yep, I want Jesus. I want to know Jesus. If you're watching online and you want to pray this prayer with me, you'll see a spot where you can click, and it says, let us know that you prayed this prayer. And I'd like you to join with me. I'd like all of you here and everybody online, I'd like you to repeat this prayer together with me, and we're going to invite Jesus into our lives this morning. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love. Thank you for dying on that cross for me. Even though you were perfect and sinless, you sacrificed for me. I invite you into my heart today. I want to know you personally. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me for anything wrong I've ever done. Thank you for a brand new start. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to do this. If you prayed that prayer online, please click the little uh, link there so we can get in touch with you. We can text with you. We can start to help you on your journey. Uh, it's been exciting to me to hear uh, last weekend somebody prayed this prayer to receive Jesus in the parking lot. I forget which campus it was, but the parking lot after church. People are open. People are looking. People need the hope of Jesus. Now, I'd like us to do this. The first group uh, who puts your hands up and you acknowledge, I need, to, I need to get back at the feet of Jesus. I just throw him into my rat race very briefly. I need to learn what it is to sit in his presence, to sit in his word. He'll change your thinking. He'll change your heart. He'll change your spirit. He'll change everything when you're in his presence. Can you stand up, all of you who put your hands up? Stand up, and I want to pray uh, with you this morning. Come on, the presence of God is here. All of us in the room, I want us to have an atmosphere and a spirit of prayer. God wants to bring you into a season where you know what it is to sit with him. And this isn't just a temporary season, because like I said, life will get back to normal. You're going to end up, you know, whenever it happens, full throttle jobs and schooling and colleges and the whole nine yards. He doesn't want you to then abandon him when that day comes. This is a Kairos moment. This is a Kairos season in time where God wants you to learn how to prioritize the relationship that matters most. And this will carry you through the rest of your life. Go ahead and lift your hands to the Lord, those who are standing, and, th and those who are seated. I want you to begin to pray. I want you to begin to call on the presence of God. If you're filled with the Spirit, speak in tongues. I want us to invite the Holy Spirit to come, and He. I want Him to touch every single heart of everyone who's standing this morning. You're standing and acknowledging that, God, you are my Savior. You are my Father. You're my King. You love me, and you want to meet with me day by day. You want me to learn to slow down and get into your presence even as I'm faithful with my duties in life and with my family and with my jobs and with all the things that I'm busy with, that's good. I'm a hard worker, but God, you want me to learn to rest in your presence, to rest in your spirit. With your hands lifted to the Lord, I want you to ask him to touch you, touch your heart, pour out, your spirit in a pour out his spirit in a fresh way on you. Come on, the spirit of God is here today to meet with you. Those of you sitting in your seats, just stretch your hands out towards people you see standing. Let's just, let's begin to fill this place with the atmosphere and presence of God. Go ahead and begin to lift your voices. Say, Lord, we need your presence. We need your Holy Spirit here today, oh God. We want to meet with you face to face. 
No matter where I go, you are with me. If I go to the, if I go to heaven, if I go to the depths of the grave, you are with me. If I stay here, if I go to the other side of the ocean, you're with me. Lord, I want to live my life with you and in your presence. Lord, I pray an outpouring of your Holy Spirit on every single one of these people here this morning. Every single one who acknowledges they need to sit with you in your presence. Lord, I pray that you would meet them. They would wake up tomorrow. They would get with you tomorrow and it would start to become a daily routine in your presence. And they will notice week by week, month by month, their desires changing, their attitudes changing, their focus changing. Jesus, we thank you that you are so faithful to us and that you love us the way that you do. I pray, Lord, that this right here would be a part of this Cairo season in their lives. This wouldn't just be a one-time standing at the end of a service. They will remember this weekend. They will remember this time, late summer 2020, where I really started to learn to sit at the feet of Jesus. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. You guys can stay standing. And I want the rest of you who put your hands up, and this group is huge, and I knew it would be, I'd like you to stand with us as well. And I want you to stand, and I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Well, this is anybody who's facing something where you need God to intervene. You want to suddenly turn around season, but your natural eyes don't even see how it's possible. God knows. With God, all things are possible. I want you to lift your hands and I want you to lift your voices, just like we're in a prayer meeting. Begin to call out on the presence of God. Begin to fix your heart and your attention on God. Invite his Holy Spirit to come and speak to you right now. Submit yourself to him. Say, God, you can bring breakthrough in my situation and I'm gonna start trusting you for it. I'm not holding you to any timelines, but I'm trusting you for a breakthrough, turnaround season in my life. Come on, church, lift your voices to the Lord this morning. He wants to hear you cry out to him. He wants to hear you cry out for more of his presence. He sees the issues of your heart. He sees that thing deep in your stomach, that knot that shows up all the time. He wants us to submit and cast all of our cares upon him because he cares for you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, oh God. Lord, you are good, you are good, you are good. Lord God, we need more of your presence. Begin to sing a new song to him. No agenda, but worshiping God, worshiping your heavenly Father. He's worthy of our praise. God, we love you, we love you, we love you. Lord, we surrender our lives to you, God. Lord, you are good, you are good all the time. Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me, oh God. Lord, I need nobody else but you. Lord, you are all I want. God, you are all I need. Let's all stand together. Let's finish off with a few minutes worshiping God. Come on, saturate this place with the presence of God. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Lord, we magnify your name. Pour out your spirit, oh God. Pour out your spirit, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, you are good, you are good. Lord, we invite your presence here. We invite your presence here. Break every chain, oh God. Break every chain, oh God. Jesus, you are all I need. You are all I need. God, pour out your presence. Pour out your presence. God wants to remind some of you this morning that he's doing a new thing. Do you not see it? 
Do you not perceive it? He is beginning to breathe life over dead bones. He's beginning to carve rivers through a dry wasteland. He's beginning to bring you along rivers of living water where you will be fueled and refreshed in his presence day by day. This is a new season. This is a new day. This is a Kairos moment for you to press in to your loving Heavenly Father. Let your faith rise this morning. God is good, and He is good to you. He is good all the time. He is good no matter what you face. He is good no matter what you go through. Come on, God is a good God. He is a faithful God. God, we love you, we love you, we love you. God, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy of our praise. Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. Lord God, we hand over to you this morning fear, doubt, worry, carrying burdens that we really can't carry. We hand it over to you because your perfect love casts out fear in our lives. And for those facing health battles right now, I pray a wave of healing over their lives. I pray a move of your Holy Spirit in their bodies. Those who've been struggling for years and for decades, I pray that there will be a suddenly moment where your spirit shows up and heals and restores. Lord, for those who are facing family struggle, marriage struggle, prodigal kids, prodigals that they've been believing for and crying for. Lord, we speak the prodigals home. We speak marriages healed and restored. We speak children being returned to the fathers. Lord, we speak that you are a God of restoration and restoration is coming to our families. Restoration is coming into our relationships. Relationships. Lord, increase our faith for a suddenly turnaround moment and season. We all wish it was happening this second. We don't know when the suddenly season comes, but let us position ourselves to receive it. Let us learn to sit at your feet while everybody else was busy running around and doing all kinds of things. You say, ah, oh, this is the better choice, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Because only you can change the human heart. Only you can redeem us sinners saved by your grace. Day by day, glory by glory, let us walk with you and be changed by you. This is a historic time we're living in. and We want more and more of you. God, there's such an excitement in my spirit about what you are doing right now. Let us be found in you. We thank you, Jesus. How many sense the presence of God speaking to you here this morning? When you don't know what else to do, get back at his feet. Get back in the word. Feed yourself scripture. Feed yourself truth. Feed yourself faith. God sees your struggle. Don't believe that lie of the enemy that God's forgotten about you. Oh, that's great that these guys had an answer to prayer and Will and Rachel had an answer to prayer. Oh, yay, what about me? God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. I remember so profoundly learning that 14 years ago when Mary was diagnosed with cancer. And we did walk through that realizing, man, God, you are right with me. How could I even imagine going through this without you? God wants to do a deep work in our hearts. And I believe this year, this is one of the critical things he wants to do in us, is just to get us back in his presence, back in his word. Adjust what, some of you are thinking, I gotta adjust my schedule. Do it, adjust your schedule because there's benefit now and benefit in the life to come with working hard and struggling and persevering and staying close to Jesus. I know they're valuable. I'm not saying they're not. We all, we all know what this is like, but boy, there's nothing 
like being changed in the word and the presence of God. Amen? How many feel encouraged by God this morning? How many can truly say he's a good God? He's a good God. He's a good God. I'd like you to say that to somebody around you as you're leaving. Come on, with faith. Say, he is a good God. He's a good God. Church, we love you. Stay close to him this week. You serve a good God.